ladies and gentlemen it's your boy rico back at it again we are live with some news man um there's been some uh some things going on today um and before i get into it i just want to introduce myself my name is rico this is the buffalo fanatics uh we are streaming on a few platforms right now so shout out to everyone tuning in real quick um so uh listen man listen first of all shout out to my guy at mayor i see you mayor free ed um wait a minute now there's a few things that we gotta we gotta really uh dive into because on the surface uh any way you look at it it's not a good look it's not a good look for ed it's not a good look for the bills it's not a good look in general i mean we all know that um it's just not a good look man um so that being said what are the ramifications for uh this act so for those that aren't sure of the details uh i'm still kind of getting into the details as well and there's more details coming out and it's not looking good for my guy ed man i'll tell you that right now so uh for those tuning in shout out to you guys about 100 of y'all uh tuned in real quick um so flick chat let me just get all that stuff out of the way if you guys haven't joined us on flick chat chat with bf.com and it's that simple join us on the flick chat uh doing it big i think we're just shy of a thousand people in there so we're always interacting right now the news of the day is ed oliver so go ahead and get in there with us and chat it up um and uh if you're not following us on all social media platforms it's the buffalo fanatics i mean instagram we're all up in there we're on the twitter obviously you guys know what it is um and uh follow your boy man follow your guy on the twitter so check this out man we have my guy ed oliver that got himself in some hot water all right so it seems as though my man was you know i mean enjoying a long day of doom bugging whatever the case may be right headed home um and somebody saw him kind of swerving in and out of the lanes right kind of driving a little recklessly so they call the authorities and so it happens to be that my guy ed had some in the middle of his lap he had liquor in the middle of his lap he had a beer First and foremost, come on, man. You can't you can't be doing that. I don't care what state you're in. I don't care. You know what I'm saying? Like what position uh you were in that day. It's a quick drive to get from A to B. It doesn't matter. We all know that. Yo, man, be responsible. Put the liquor down or stay where you're at. Enjoy yourself where you're at. Sleep over. Do what you must. Right? But apparently he felt that maybe I can get home just fine. Apparently not, because you got pulled over. So now I'm still trying to get the 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 details of it, but it seems as though although getting pulled over for DUI or DWI, I think is what you guys call it in the States. Anyway, um driving while intoxicated, he also had a pistol in the car. So those that's when things get muddy. You know what I mean, and the the fact of the matter is you get pulled over drunk, okay. They make you do the test, they make you do all that good stuff. You know what I mean one leg up in one line i saw the footage it didn't look great but it didn't look horrible but nonetheless it's a terrible look regardless of how you look at it so the fact of the matter is you got pulled over and now you got a pistol in the car now i was under the assumption that because of the pistol this is what makes the act even worse because he's got a pistol as well if it was just a dwi then it's a whole different ball game but now you got a pistol in the car now, whether it registered or not, that is, there are layers to it. So apparently I thought, uh, I read that it, it was a registered pistol to him. So that's what makes this an unlawful, what they call this is an unlawful, uh, I think it's called a, U, a UCW, unlawful carry, carrying of a weapon, right? What made it unlawful was the fact that A, he was driving reckless, B, knowingly driving under the, under the impression, uh, excuse me, under the influence, right? Uh, of drinking so my man is, is going to do time now not time behind bars or whatnot uh, but he definitely is going to get suspended and it's a sad case man and that's a minimum of a two game suspension minimum so he's missing those two games no no matter how you look at it no matter how you slice it so what happens to him in terms of like legalities so there's and i'm, I'm still kind of learning this thing man class a all the way to class c class c it's a fine, slap with a $500 fine, and away you go. In this case, because it's potentially an unregistered uh, pistol in this situation, and he's driving drunk, yo, man, it's just muddy. It's muddy altogether. So uh, 
not a good look, man. It's not a good look. Uh, Jason, Jason Northrop. I saw you quite. I saw your statement, but I missed it. Oh, there you are. So that that's what it was gonna get. That is was gonna uh, gonna get him good on the DWI. But the fact that they had the gun on him too, yes. So the fact that he had liquor and a pistol, that's a deadly combination, man. It's a, it's a bad combination. You can't have the two. And the fact that potentially it was an unregistered uh, uh, pistol. Now, I don't know how they run things in Texas, uh, whether registered or not. But to, for my understanding, you own a pistol. You have to have registry. You have to have ownership of that pistol. Registration. You can't be running around dirty with, you know, what I'm saying an unregistered pistol. Not. Nah, I don't know the facts. We're still trying to gather them, but either way, it's a terrible look. You know what I mean for the team that drafted you. It's a terrible look for your teammates. Your teammates are looking at you like, come on, man. Like we're trying to we're trying to make big moves, big make big movements, and this is a hindrance. Now, is does this happen to a whole bunch of cats? Of course, athlete or not. It happens. Now, I'm not going to sit here and because he's an athlete, put him on a, a pedestal like you shouldn't. You know what I mean, he's no different from you and I. You know what I'm saying? We have a lapse in judgment. This was a big lapse in judgment. Um, question from the Facebook user says, can can you get DWI on a horse? <laughs> Shit, I, maybe you can. Shit, I don't know, man. Maybe you can. Who knows? Uh, if you're driving that horse recklessly, yeah, you can. So the big, the major thing here is when you are when you knowingly is one recklessly and intentionally are are in an act committing an act that's what gets you in trouble so uh did he did he have any intentions of hurting anybody we never do right but nonetheless he did drive did you wreck were you reckless you absolutely were you're reckless driving a, a super duty you know what i'm saying that's a 250 f-250 that's a big boy with a doom buggy at the back 100 percent, right and and last but not least, I mean, knowingly, know, knowingly that you could hurt someone. Um, there, there's just a whole bunch of layers to this. So uh, now, is he going to get through this? Absolutely. Is he a first-time offender? Absolutely. There, is there a difference with a first-time first-time offender? Yeah, they don't slap you as hard with it. But I'll tell you right now, now you are on the list. You've officially made your stuff on the list now. So if you do run into trouble in the future. These these little things that happen to you in the early of your career don't go away. So now you're now on a <laughs> you're on a tight leash, my guy. You are on a tight leash. So it's gonna be it's gonna be something uh, interesting um, going forward to see how the team handles this, how the NFL handles this. Uh, I can guarantee you, he's getting a two year because Freeman, the VAR, I think a Dante Freeman, running back that came out of Texas, uh, ran into something very similar to this where. Uh, he had a pistol, pistol, and I think he had pistol and weed, pistol and weed. And I think my man's got a good lawyer, kind of dropped one and then uh, got the other, like kind of dropped to uh, a very misdemeanor case, a very low case. So I think what he did was he got the, the gun possession charge dropped and then just dealt with the DWI, right? So depending on who, who he gets as a lawyer and how he lawyers up, we're going to find out how uh, this plays out, but altogether this isn't a good look this isn't a good look now i don't know the laws so if y'all know the laws man please comment in the comment section let me know how it works um we got a facebook user and i can't see the name so i apologize for that but uh it's texas my man carrying a gun is like carrying your wallet people need to stop crucifying him he's kind he's kind he's a kid and made a bad decision to get behind the wheel he's lucky that he didn't hurt anyone or himself uh it's a learning experience it absolutely is it absolutely is now uh, ain't nobody crucifying, man, because this could easily happen to each and any any of us. Probably some of you guys tuning in right now watching, it's happened to you where, you know what I'm saying, you got caught drinking and driving, and it's happened. You know what I'm saying? Do you mean to do it? Were you thinking that you were just fine? Oh, okay, I can drive home. I'm, I'm good. But that's not what. That's not the point. The point is the fact that you knew you were drinking, you were driving. It's, it's a no-no. It's a no-go. So uh, he is definitely going to be facing some time. Um, I can assume so. Uh, and according to reports, he's at least going to be getting two games. And if these, if more information comes out and there's more stuff in the system and whatever, uh, it could get worse. They didn't find anything else in his car, though. They didn't find any drugs. They didn't get anything. It was just the alcohol in the, in the pistol. Um, and that's where they're at right now. So uh, it'll be interesting to see how it goes down. Um with ed oliver and see sees what, what goes down with him going forward now how does this impact <clears throat> the team 
right? So you have a player of the caliber of Ed Oliver that's going to be, uh, if miss if he misses games, which I think he will, uh, that's going to be hurtful to the team, right? So you got to give credit, you got to give praise to Brandon Bean and Sean McDermott because just because they had Ed Oliver in the first round, they didn't rest. They said, no, nah, we got to bolster that line. So what do they do? They lose Jordan Phillips and they bring in Vernon um, Vernon Butler. They bring in Jefferson. Uh, you got Starla Tule coming back. You have Harrison Phillips coming back. You have the the young, I mean, young player development that's going to be happening in Vincent Taylor. So we've got some depth at the defensive tackle position. So does it does it hurt? Yes, because you want all your guys to be there. Now, the one thing, and I think that it goes down this way, even though potentially you will be suspended, I think you can still practice with the team. So he's not going to miss any reps when it comes to getting himself conditioned once this whole football thing starts. Because OTAs were supposed to be starting this week or this week or this this coming week. OTAs were supposed to be starting. So this is what happens. So if OTAs was on the brain, OTAs was on the mind, then we're not we're not talking about this. Right. But it is what it is, man. So things happen. Uh, it's unfortunate. Uh, but we're going to have to deal with it. So the, the fact of the matter is we got Vernon Butler, we got Harrison Phillips, and we got Jefferson coming in, and we have a little bit of S Epinesa that can play a little bit of three tech and then come back out. Um, in terms of depth, we will be fine, right? But you want your starters and you want your guys like your Ed Oliver that's going to be a, an impact player to be on the field immediately because this schedule that we will be, will be, play, that we, will be facing this year ain't no joke. And you want to get away with the first dub against the Jets. And we need all the damn pressure to get to Sam Darnold because that team has improved. That O-line has definitely improved. So we need all the firepower we we can to get after uh, Sam Darnold and the boys in the Jets, right? So that is going to be, um, that's, that's going to be problematic. But uh, we're going to let it all play out. Uh, make sure that uh, everything is on the up and up. And uh, we'll go from there, man. But this is a black eye, man. In, especially in the off season, this is a black eye uh, for the organization because um, it's not a good look. And for those that that have been saying, man, we we got a whole bunch of, and I, I don't want to say this, but like it's because I see it and read it everywhere. We have a bunch of choir boys on the team, and this, that, and the third. This doesn't this doesn't uh, put make Ed Oliver a negative person, and he just he just effed up. He messed up, uh, and he's going to pay for it. You know what I'm saying? Because right now, his family's looking at this like, come on, man, we raised you better than that. We raised you better than that. You know better, right? You got your teammates that are going to be on you, and you got the organization, and you got the fans, man. I mean, we watch you. We watch you. We want you to be on the squad, and we see stuff like this. You're like, come on, man. We got we to gotta get it together. But this is going to be a humbling experience for him. He's going to be like, yo, man, I can't take this opportunity for granted. You some Certain things like this happen where you you it's a learning. It's an eye-opener. Your eyes are open and be like, all right, man, I can't mess this up, man. I can't mess this up. And one of the guys on Sport Track, um, the Sport Track website was like, hey, not only is he going to miss games, he's going to be missing on, on his game checks. And I'm talking about to the, to the likes of 80 grand a paycheck, a game check. You feel me? So not only are you going to be losing over 100, 160K on top of that, uh, not only that, there's a potential that he could be his $6.8 million could be voided. Now, whether that is true or not, I gotta look into a little into a little more. But having this act kill your six point eight million dollars, that is going to hurt the that hurts the pocket. Now, I don't know how truthful that is, but if that is true, bro, that's the bag. That's a bag, and you mess that up for some beer in the lap. And come on, man, you tripping? You tripping? You know what I'm saying? Now, is it something that this has been? He's done this before, where it's like, oh, this is nothing, man. I'm driving from here to here. It's not a big deal. Uh, who knows? Nobody nobody really knows. So um, that being said, we are what we are. So if he's losing $6.8 million, I feel for you. I feel for you, man. I hope, I hope that it doesn't get affected in that way. But if it is, that is an eye opener for you because you now you're going to have no, no choice but to bust your butt. Bust your butt and get to the bag in your second contract because that's a that's a big bag you potentially just lost. So my man, Mayor says uh, his 6.5 million is voided. So if it is, I don't know how truthful that is, but we'll go from there. 
Uh, so I'm going to take a couple questions, statements, concerns, and I'm going to get out of here. Um, so I got my guy, Steven Buzzard. He says that he failed the sobriety test. Yeah, man. Uh, according to the reports, he failed the sobriety test. And when you look at the video itself, um, they made him, you know, I mean, the typical walk in one line, keep your foot in front of the other and keep going. My man looked a little shaky. He looked a little unbalanced, right? Um, and then they made him stand on one foot and raise the other foot and kind of stand there and try to keep his balance. And truth be told, he looked like he did all right <laughs> with that test. But that one walking in line with one foot in front of the other, mm, that one's a little that one, that one was a little shaky. That was a little shaky, man. Um, so yeah, that's go, that goes from there. Uh, Facebook user says, uh, not worried at all. If this is the worst he does, then it's not a big deal. As long as it doesn't become a regular issue. The gun charge is a technicality. He legally owned it. We don't know that yet. We don't know if he owned it or not. They're saying that it was unregistered. Now, unregistered tells me, I mean, if it's not registered, who does it belong to? Now, you're going to have to prove some paperwork. I don't, I don't know about that. Um, but apparently, you're saying that he legally owned it. So, it was a legal gun. If it is, that's a, that's a good sign. Um, he was just intoxicated, so not supposed to have it in the vehicle that will likely be dropped in Texas. So, see, what I understand, because that's originally what I thought when I was look, look, looking at it until someone said that it was unregistered. So, that's why I'm not saying that as, as gospel, because I don't know. But what made the act terrible was that he had a pistol in the vehicle. So, when you got both those things together, that's when we start now, the questions start to to become plentiful, right? So, nonetheless, it's a bad act. It's a It's a terrible act. I mean... You don't want to see that, man. That's a young guy. You don't want to see that. It might be one person, but it could mess up uh, for our games. Yeah, man. I mean, you want the full fan experience of having all the guys that you want to see there. And when you when you guys have, when you have guys in trouble like this, um, you hope that this is just a one time occurrence and not uh, not something that you will see often. So uh, it's unfortunate if that's the case. Uh, even if dropped in Texas, it won't be dropped in the court of Goodell. <laughs> You're damn right. It's not, man. Goodell is going to be uh, putting down suspension for sure. There's no question about it. Um, so, uh, yeah, my, my guy Michael says, yo, Preach Rico, you talking to me? I mean, I'm trying to. I'm only trying to gain the information and then provide it to y'all. Because, I mean, you guys have been reading the whole thing, right? So, uh, it's kind of good to kind of talk about it. And I'm kind of reading through the comments here um, and go from there. So, some one of the Randall Runyon says possession of a weapon is not a misdemeanor. Um, if you don't, I believe it's not a misdemeanor. If you if it's a if it's loaded and it's not registered to you, I believe it becomes a felony. But the misdemeanor, I mean, right now it's looking like it is a misdemeanor based on what we're seeing. But we're gonna find out. We're gonna. I'm sure there's gonna be way more information coming out. Um, so we'll go from there, man. Facebook user says uh, pickup truck, doom buggy, firearm, Buffalo Bills, and a couple drinks. Sounds like a lot of a lot, sounds like a lot a, sounds a lot like every weekend during my youth only difference is he got caught making a bad decision picking taking the road man there's how many times in truthfulness how many times have you guys been somewhere where you're like man I, i'm good i'm good i had a couple waters i'm straight i can drive home and do this that and the third um and you know what i'm saying you get pulled over for whatever reason you're saying i've seen enough of my friends in in the day where they say yo i'm good i'm straight and then boom they get caught with something so you can't you can't be doing that stuff man or people i know from back way back in the day so you got to be responsible man and you got to give me you got people looking up to you you got your family looking up to you like you you did all this work to make it to the league to 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 falter in this way i mean and you're not perfect you can things are gonna happen but you work too damn hard for this man you work too damn hard you got people depending on you you gotta you gotta you know what i'm saying you gotta look at the bigger picture in this thing and this to me uh this was more of a selfish act in his regard because you decided to make that decision take that decision and drive impaired that's the you're gonna get it costs you man it's gonna cost you your fam you know what i'm saying your wallet and your teammates but we got a good we got a good uh nucleus of guys on this team man they're not gonna hold it down on them they're gonna be like, yo man you, you effed up so now you you goofed up now you got to get your act together I that's all it is, man. Now you got to get your act together. Now his focus is going to be even better. So maybe this is a blessing in disguise. His focus is going to be top notch. He's going to be ready to roll and let's go. You feel me? So, um, my guy, history, history says, uh, history, Ryan says history teacher, Ryan. Is that what it is? Uh, good people make bad decisions. Doesn't mean he is a bad person. It means he's human. Absolutely. There's no question about it. Ain't nobody judging him like that. It's just one of those situations where it's unfortunate. That's what it comes down to. Um, 
I'm guessing a plea to the DWI and the gun gets dropped. And that's what I'm thinking too, right? Because I think that's what most players say. Okay, yo, you know what? Yep, I did get caught drinking. My bad. Um, cool. We'll take the plea. Get over it. Because some of these prosecutors too, right? They just want in and out. They just want to get you, get you, you know what I mean, papered up and you're done. They don't want to get this thing all dragged out. So, okay, you took the DWI? Straight. Cool. That's done with. Okay, so now uh, the, the gun charge. Okay, so you own the gun. Oh, that's yours? Okay, cool. Don't do it again. Dropped. Let's go. But then you got to go see Goodell. And Goodell's going to be like, yeah, yeah, you got out of that. You got out of those woods. Now you're in my woods. Here's the deal. Here's what happens. Here's what it is. Two game suspension. Or it might be four. I don't know. Who knows, man? But uh, that's what it comes down to. So my, my man goes uh, two game suspension minimum. Like you said, people are blowing this out of proportion. That's what I think. I think it's just going to be a two gamer uh, and call it a day. Call it a day, and then he'll be back sooner than you know, and then uh, we'll go from there. You might even get it down to one if he if he's if he's nice like that. Um, so yeah, man, that's what it is, man. So, ladies and gentlemen, uh, I I didn't want to stay on too long. I just wanted to come on and chat uh, with y'all about this uh, this Ed Oliver news. Is he going to bounce back? Absolutely. Uh, is he going to have more focus going forward? Uh, I hope so. Um, I really do. I don't think I don't think this is a Marcel Darius type of situation where my man got the bag. And he decided to just kind of go go down from there. You feel me? So um, I think that we have, um, I think we vetted these guys coming onto the team a lot better than we have in the past. That's one thing I'll give uh, McDermott a lot of credit for. He's vetting these guys very well, as opposed to a Doug Whaley, which I still like. I still got love for Doug Whaley. Doug Whaley was like, yo, just bring the talent. Man, forget about all that stuff you've been through. Bring the talent. Bring your ass here. But here we are. Here we are. You know what I'm saying? So I think that we are in prime position right now. We have the GM. Uh, I think we have a damn good GM. I am I'm a I'm a big fan of Brandon Bean. I like that dude, man. He doesn't he cuts right to the chase and tells you like it is. Uh, I like our head coach, love our head coach, love what we have building in Buffalo. It's gonna be nice. I look forward to this season. I'm really hoping that over time uh all this stuff gets cleared up and we can kind of get back to somewhat of uh normalcy. Uh, but there's gonna be a lot of new changes. Um, but that's going to be our new normal. So we're just going to have to get make do, get with it, uh, and and keep and keep going with it, man. So uh, that being said, I appreciate you guys tuning in because uh, we tune in right now on Periscope. I think we're on Periscope. So shout out to my Twitter folk. Uh, shout out to the IG. Actually, IG's not on this, so I'm gonna have to hit you hit y'all up later. Um, but uh, let me let me drop a couple banners for y'all so you know what's good. So uh, if you guys uh, want to tune in, uh, hit up. Our blog site, we got all our written pieces here on the Buffalo Fanatics. Uh, hit that up. Uh, if you're not following us on the on the Twitter, hit it up. Follow us on Twitter. Y'all know what it is. This is us on the IG. It's the Buffalo Fanatics. Um, and if join us on right now with the uh, with the chat app, right? So it's the Flick Chat. So chat with BF.com. Hit that up. Uh, we're trying to get it over as much people as possible right before the season starts. So we have this thing buzzing all year round. All right. And uh, last but not least, man. This is it, man. It's Real Rico. I'm your guy. I appreciate you guys tuning in. So until next time, it's your boy. And I'm going to catch you on the next one. Out.